together, get together with the law. Well, they will treat each other like sister and brother when they all get together with the law. Get together with the Lord. Get together, get together with the Lord. Well, now the weak are no longer afraid of the stronger when they all get together with the Lord. Well, when they all get together.
thank you so much. It is a joy to get to be in Hope, Arkansas tonight and to get to see all of you who have come out on this uh, summertime Friday night when you could be headed in any direction you wanted to go for the weekend. We're glad that you're here. And uh, Father's Day weekend is always one of those times when you just don't know who's going to show up and who's not going to show up. But boy, we got a much better crowd than I thought we'd have. We were in uh, Seminole, Oklahoma last night, and that is one of the last remaining of the big all-night outdoor gospel music events in our country. And uh, last night there was uh, tornado uh, warnings, and, and then there was a tornado watch. And um, well, that was in the afternoon yesterday. So about, I don't know, 3.30 yesterday afternoon, we got a, a message from the promoter that they were moving the event inside because of impending weather issues. I got on my knees and began to thank the Lord for that. <laughs> a little rain never hurt anybody, and I'm hoping nobody got hurt with the tornado that touched down in the field about a mile and a half from where we were. I don't think there was even a cow out there, so we're good. But I was so grateful to get to be inside last night instead of outside in that 100 degree weather that is normally out there when we're out there. But uh, we're here tonight and glad that you're here. How many have never seen this bunch before tonight? Raise your hand if that's you. You've never seen us before tonight. Okay, quite a few of you, okay. I'll, let me do this quickly then. Uh, I'll start with this one right here. Uh, this is our tenor singer, and he is from Huntington, Indiana. And he... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Nobody usually cares anyway. <laughs> He's the only Yankee on the platform right now. And... Uh, we love picking at him about that. About, I guess he'd been here right at a month when I noticed one day we had stopped at this place called Cracker Barrel to eat. And uh, it was a little bit foreign to him, but he was willing to try it. And we went in and sat down, and a couple of us ordered sweet iced tea. And when he heard that, he thought, hmm, no. he ordered it. And when he got it, he decided he liked it real well. So I thought, we may make a southerner out of him after all. And uh, he looked at me kind of funny. He said, uh, this tastes different than sweet tea that I've had in the north. I said, yeah, it's going to. He said, why? I said, well, that stuff you have up there in Yankee land, that is actually unsweet tea with sand in the bottom of the glass. That's what happened. <laughs> Down here, we make it the way the Lord intended for it to be made. And he said, would you show me how to do that when we get home? I said, man, it's rocket science, but I'll be glad to help you with it, okay? <laughs> and we got home, and I taught him how to make sweet tea where the sugar actually melts in the process. Woo! <laughs> and it was like he got saved all over again. I, but his name is Stephen Adair. He's 44 years of age, and he is married and has been married for a year and a half. And a lot of people want to know if this is his first marriage. That's a very popular question uh, nowadays. And uh, the answer to that is yes, it is. In fact, there's a man at First Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, at the big annual old-fashioned summer revival uh, that they have every year. Last August, we were there, privileged to get to be there for a couple of days to sing and be a part of that meeting. And at the end of the first night, I had introduced the guys like I'm doing right now. And at the end of the first night, there was this gentleman that followed us out to the product table at that big, beautiful foyer there. And uh, when I turned around, he was standing right in my face. He said, Brother Mark, that tenor of yours. I said, yep, what about him? He said, you say he's 43 years old, which he was at the time. I said, yes, that's correct. And you say he's been married just less than a year. He's a newlywed. I said, yes, sir, that's correct. And this is his first marriage? And when he said that, the Baptist preacher's kid in me wanted to come out so bad. But I, I, was, I was, by the grace of God, I was able to squelch that and kind of suppress it. Because what I really wanted to say, what was in my mind was, you old goat, that ain't none of your business. <laughs> but I got past that. I was able to go by that. And I said, yes, sir, this is 
his first marriage. And he looked straight at me and said, what an idiot, and turned around and walked away. <laughs> you can't make it up. <laughs> if you're glad to see Stephen Adair, welcome Brother Stephen. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that man's name because you know him. Uh, come up here. This one, I know him real well. Uh, he is 39 years of age. He is the proud father of the three most perfect children in the world. And they call me Papa. That's why you see him pinching me on the back of the arm once in a while and I'm slapping him away. I'm not being ugly to him. This is my son. And I'm just doing what I've had to do all of his life, which is once in a while, quit, leave me alone. That's, that's just us, so uh, don't get too upset about it. This one is uh, our lead singer and our songwriter, and he too is married. He lives in Gadsden, Alabama, uh, about, uh, what, about five miles from me. So I get to see my grandchildren quite often, and I'm very happy about that. And uh, he, uh, I'll tell you, is one of the finest lead singers in gospel music today. He hates it when I say that. But God has given in him a true talent and a true gift to communicate the message of the good Lord to people just like you. And I'm very proud of him. And if you're glad to see him tonight, let him know it. His name is Nick Trammell. Welcome, Brother Nick. This is our new bass singer, and we're delighted to have him as a part of our ministry, and to be able to serve alongside him is a absolute joy. He uh, is a full-time eater and part-time singer. <laughs> and if you don't believe it, just follow us to the restaurant when it's over with tonight. You'll figure it out all by yourself. Uh, when he got here, I figured out two things about him. Number one, he loves to sing. He loves to communicate this message that God has given us. He loves to watch the countenance on your face change during the course of an evening when you figure out that there is still nothing we face that's bigger than the God we serve. That's just his number one motive. And I know that I've watched him. I've heard him sing. I've watched him around people. I know that's what he loves. Number two, he loves to eat. And I'm talking about large volumes of food. Right now, he is whispering in my ear, do they have a Chinese buffet? <laughs> you can't make it up, it's the truth. And I'll promise you, he would put them out of business if they had one here. But if you're glad to see our bass singer, he too is married. He has three children and one on the way. And uh, I will tell you, not a finer guy in the world, and uh, his name, when I remember it, I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> Will Lane. Welcome, Will, tonight. <laughs> Last but not least is our piano player. He's been with us now, well, next month. He will celebrate six years of being with our ministry. And uh, I want to tell you, uh, that means that he was nine when he got here. A lot of people make fun of him because he looks so young. He, uh, I've never seen anybody. Uh, Jay, I'm just being honest now, okay? Totally honest. I've never seen anybody more excited about becoming 25 years of age than he was. It's the truth. He was tore up about turning 25. Just a few weeks back was his birthday. And he's been talking about it for two months. So I finally, I heard enough of it on the bus, kept overhearing it, him talking about, but when I turned 25 and, and all these things. And so I finally stopped him one day and said, son, he's like my other child. So I just talked to him like he is. I said, wait a minute. You keep telling everybody about turning 25. What's so wonderful about turning 25? I vaguely remember that myself. And I remember it was okay. The greatest thing that happened to me when I turned 25 is, is when he made me a dad. And other than that, it was just kind of normal day. But everything else was, I mean, that was a wonderful thing. Everything else was pretty normal. For him, it was very special. So I asked him, what is it? I need to know. I've heard enough. I need to know what it is. And he very graciously and politely smiled. He said, well, when I turned 23, my dad made me start paying for my own car insurance. 
And when I went down to the insurance agency, the agent filled out the paperwork and he showed me the paperwork and I signed it and I gave him the first payment. And he said, son, I realize this is extremely expensive and more expensive than your monthly payment on your car. But when you turn 25, it'll go down 60%. <laughs> You can't make it up. And uh, he is so glad to be with Progressive, I'm gonna tell you, he is. Uh, but if you're glad to see Trevor Conkle, welcome Trevor tonight as he plays for you. some things like we did uh, 49 years ago when I started doing this back in the days <laughs> back in the days when you actually had to have a little talent to do what we do uh, this is going to uh, just be <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is going to be real plain and simple and ordinary for a lot of you because our world has gotten so accustomed to hearing all this great ex expensive orchestration that we have that our producers uh, um, put together for us. And, and, and that's fine, I love it. I'm, I'm not, I ain't knocking it. But when I started, there was four singers and a piano and maybe one guitar. And that was it. And I, Lord, I don't know how we made it with just that. But it seemed like we did okay. Um, I'm still eating every week. So, uh, and you can tell by looking, these boys are too, most of them are. Uh, I want us to do this. Um, there's one fellow in the house uh, by the name of Goble that I know is uh, very familiar with old quartet music. And we're about to try to do a little bit of that. Some of y'all uh, will remember this particular song. Um, one of my heroes wrote this song back in the 60s. His name was George Yance, and I had the privilege of uh, being a part of his life for about 11 years. And 
and uh, he wrote this song, and I just love it. We we are just finishing up a new project, and we decided to record this uh, on a project that is full of great classic uh, four-part old-style quartet songs. See if you remember this, and as the guys sing it for you.
the ones we don't know better than the ones we do know. So let's do this. Uh, I want to do, uh, since we've got that new project, we need to rehearse. And I'm from Arkansas, and I've been singing to y'all for 60 plus years. So uh, I've never had anything thrown at me during the course of a concert here in this great state. Uh, and because I know that, I'm not afraid to try something different. So we're going to do something we hadn't done out where people could hear us doing it, okay? Uh, this is on the new project as, as well. Uh, and by the way, don't come to the table and ask for it when it's over, because it ain't out yet, okay? Uh, but we may as well rehearse. Y'all okay with us doing two or three songs that we own? Okay. <laughs> just sent some of these new tracks to us as they uh, finished uh, mixing them. So uh, I just asked him if he thought we could get through this one. He said, I don't know. <laughs> and we're going to find out. <laughs> I love the fact that it features him, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but uh, this one, uh, the Oak Ridge Quartet, before they were the Oak Ridge Boys, many years ago, early 1960s, recorded this song. And I love the message in it, and I love the fact that it was written in the late 50s, but it is so relevant for right now in history. See if you don't agree with this great song. <laughs> Savior is 
Still it seems I almost stumble and I fall But the tender hand that leads me Is the hand that keeps me steady And by faith I know I'll make it after Just a few more days to live. calculated risk and I know it is. We had one young man ask us to do can he could he would he tonight and I told him I said uh, no he can't. <laughs> it means that I have to remember stuff that I remembered back in the middle 1980s and if you go further back I can sing all of them but I, from the 80s forward I don't know what happened to me. Anybody else have an issue similar to that? You just, you forget why you go into the lemon room and you, when you get there, you don't know why you went. Amen, okay, good. Some of y'all are lying right now, but that's all right. Here's one uh, that I personally like, and I'm, I want us to rehearse it just cause I like it. And if y'all like it, you let them know about it. If you don't like it, just Stare at them like you are me right now. Here we go. Let's do it. Some morning, sir. Some morning, sir. I'm gonna take to the air. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave this world of sorrow and care. I'll hear the welcome bells all ringing. Home, but I'll be ringing when they call.
Challenge, try to find just 10 songs that will speak to an entire era of music in history. That's been a real challenge, and I don't know that we've done a good job of it, but boy, we've had fun with it. This one was written by J.D. Sumner. Anybody here remember J.D. Sumner? <laughs> J.D., of course, sang with the Blackwood Brothers early on. He sang with the Sunshine Boys back before any of us was born. Uh, and then it sang with the Blackwood Brothers, and then he, he started J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet. And then, of course, they sang, they, they backed up Elvis for years um, uh, before Elvis passed away. And J.D. and Elvis were really good friends. And uh, they, would, they would gather around when a concert, when one of Elvis's concerts was over with, they'd gather around the piano when everybody left. And Ed Hill would say, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. And he would go outside and get in the limousine. And a lot of times, when everybody would leave, he'd come back in, and the quartet would still be there. And they'd gather around the piano. Most people don't know this. They'd gather around the piano, and they'd start singing. And Elvis would sing, How Great Thou Art, and, and oh, great old hymns of the faith. And, and uh, the stamps would back him up. They would just sing to each other. That's how much they loved it. But this is a very fun song written by a very uh, fun bass singer. One of the craziest old men I ever knew was J.D. Sumner. And we've got a bass singer that knows how to sing the rhythm that J.D. could write. And if you enjoy it, let him know it after we sing. This great song. For so long I traveled down the sinful road. My troubles were so many, such a heavy, heavy load. Then I turned to Jesus, the better way He showed. I did so much better on the victory road. I'll be more on the victory road. They lay down my heavy load and hold her back. Hold her back. It's in the Lord. I'll be more on the way.
Yeah, praise the Lord. Let us do some uh, some things off of our new projects before uh, we say good night to you. This one is one of my favorites, and the reason it is is not necessarily because my son wrote it and God gave him this lyric, but uh, because of what it the challenges us to do. Uh, John three sixteen. Everybody in the world has seen John three sixteen. The signs uh, at football stadiums or baseball games or in lots of different places around the world. And, and, and most anybody, even non-Christian people, can give you a pretty good idea of what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Most everybody has no idea what the next verse says. And when Jesus was doing the talking, you really should pay attention. But John 3, 17 says this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Uh, Nicodemus needed to listen to a lot of things. That would have been one of them for me. Listen as we say this great message. Garden of Eden, the first choice was made to reject holy God and to sin be enslaved. Separation from God was sin's only demand to further and further be strayed from his hand. Then down through the ages the preachers would come, declaring this message of hope to God's Son. Be saved, be redeemed. Be washed in the blood, be set free from the chains, from the grave, from the power that holds you in slave.
love to just put y'all in, get us three or four buses, and put them, put y'all in it. And uh, just take y'all to other places with us so those people would know how to act when somebody says. <laughs> Amen. What's that, honey? I said, we just here. Hallelujah, praise. That's right. That'd be fine with me. Uh, I'm not kidding. That's places where we go that uh, they don't act like y'all do. How, how, how many Baptists we got? I'm just curious. If you're Baptist, raise your hand. Put your hand down. If you're Pentecostal, raise your hand. There's some. Okay, I thought there was. All right, good. good. I saw some movement back there. I got one in my group right there. That's the reason I know about it. Of course, I've been around some others, too, that, you know, they clap on two and four. All the rest of us claps on one and three. And, and, and it, we all look at Pentecostal folks like, y'all are off when they're actually on. And the rest of us just think we're right. Amen. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a Baptist, so I'll talk about them. If you're not, you just keep your mouth shut. We'll handle it, okay? Uh, but I, I, you know what? Let's do, uh, let's, let me tell you first that we do have product out at the table. You have never seen a group that does what we do that didn't have something you could take home with you to help them buy diesel fuel. Uh, Jay talked about that a while ago. That is true, that's very true. In fact, we're gonna do this tonight in such a way that you will actually be helping yourself more than us, okay? That's the honest truth. Tonight, Trevor has put a package together. Normally CDs are $15 each, right? It are some, in some cases they're $20 each now. Um, but tonight you're gonna to get our two latest CDs or $20, one $20 bill, right? And then if you want our two latest and Trevor's brand new piano solo project that's got 20 of his favorite old hymns of the church on one project. <laughs> and when he told me what he was gonna do and he was gonna do his 20 of his favorite old hymns of the church and he's 25 years old. I couldn't help but wonder what they were going to be. <laughs> 25 years ago, if they were hymns in our... No, I won't go there. Never mind. I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> uh, some of them I wouldn't sing. But um, they really are the old hymns of the church. Old, way older than some of us. Yes, okay. And uh, I've heard it, and it's really, really good. Uh, all three for $30, right? Okay. And you have that on thumb drive as well, right? Same package on thumb drive. Some of you wonder what a thumb drive is. I had to be edu educated to this, and I see a lot of y'all that's got platinum blonde hair like me. So I'm sure you need to be educated too. If you bought a car the last two or three years, you get it home. And a month or so later, you decide you want to listen to some music, and you figure out there's not a CD player in that car. I had a fellow ask about that today. He said, yeah, y'all just don't sell CDs anymore? Well, if we didn't sell CDs anymore, we wouldn't be out here singing, I can tell you that. Uh, we couldn't afford to. Uh, if y'all didn't keep us out here, I'd just go home. I'd rather be at home with my wife as I had to be out here with y'all. But God has called us to do what we do. And in real truth, he still sustains us in what we do in the strangest of ways, whether it be through CD sales or offerings or somebody just walking up to the table and say, hey, I want to be a part of your ministry, and we walk away, and when we get to the bus, we sit there and laugh and squall a lot because of the provision of God. You can't make it up. It's true. We're not supposed to be out here. COVID should have done all of us in, especially in the gospel music world should have shut up all of us down. I don't know why he won us. I don't know why we're still out here. I don't know why he picked us as being one of the groups that's still able to continue and function. I don't know. I'm not God. But what I do know is it became very obvious very quickly that he was anything but finished with us because we never missed a meal. 
We never missed a bus payment. We never missed an insurance payment. We don't know there was a pandemic other than I had COVID twice. I liked it so well. <laughs> the second time, it nearly killed me, and I said, no, you ain't. I've got stuff to do. But uh, I said all that to say this. You decide you want a thumb drive and you think you don't know what it is. There's a reason why we have them out there. Uh, those folks that don't have CD players anymore. There's this thing in that car you got now called a USB port. But I learned that not long ago. You say, I have no clue where that would be in my car. Take your grandchildren to the car with you. They can show you where it's located. <laughs> Promise. That's what I did. Now, and you can listen to us continuously on that thing. Once they get it started, you can, in fact, you'll have to call them and get them to come by someday and turn it off. I mean, that's all you'll be listening to is us. So you get tired of us until they teach you how to turn it off, Okay. But we have that, and, and the two ladies are on one thumb drive, right? And then Trevor's is on a thumb drive. So we got you covered any way you want to go. We got you covered. You can take us home. The least expensive way to take Trevor Conkle home is to buy his thumb drive or CD and head out the door as quick as you can. That boy is high maintenance. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, there's a reason he's still single. Because it would take three women working full time to keep up with everything he thinks he needs. <laughs> he knows I'm telling the truth right now. That's why he's squirming so bad. Uh, we've had such a good time with y'all. And uh, I can breathe Arkansas air for just a little while. And it don't mean anything to these guys around me, but it means a lot to me. It's home still. After 65 years, it's still home. And uh, we're just honored to come and be with us. I want us to sing one more song, and then we're going to say goodnight to you. And pastor's going to come, and he's going to close. Brother Nick, however you see fit. The hope that we have as born again believers doesn't matter what denominational tag is on the front of our church doors the hope that we have as those who have been washed in the blood of the lamb is the reality that when jesus was talking to those that he loved in the gospel of john chapter 14 he made a statement that has been so used so many times and and uh, funerals and homegoing celebrations, but it is so much for us right now for the living. He's made the statement, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And he was trying to prepare their hearts for the reality of what was coming. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and in Arkansas lingo, that means just as sure as I'm going, I'm coming back. If I go, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. Not for just that room. And for that mealtime, but for all of us, it's reality. Amen. He's coming again. Our prayer is that when he does, you're ready to meet him and to spend eternity with Jesus in all of us.
that he has mended, those from prison he has freed. Little children.